Hey, how are you doing? This is Tony from Six Screen Corner, and today I'm going to talk about five mistakes that beginner guitar players make. So let's get to it. Number one, you're not listening to your guitar. Listen, and more specifically, what I'm really talking about is you're not checking to see if you are in tune. You don't hear that you're in tune, especially for the beginner. You might not catch this right off the bat. So the best way, the most obvious way is before you play, before you practice, check your tuning. Get your guitar tuned up. There's lots of great electronic tuners out there. There's pedals, there's clip-ons. Get some of those, get one of those, get two of those, get whatever, get your guitar in tune. Set yourself up for success. That's the first thing. And number two, when you're practicing, especially when we're practicing our chords, I know a lot of beginners need to work on this as well. Know if your strings are clear. Do they sound good? If you have a dead string, work on the finger positioning. Practice, 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 practice. You won't get it right away but it will make you a better player if you're paying attention to making sure that your notes and your strings sound clear and that they're in tune. Two, we've got to be perfect. <laughs> this isn't just a beginner problem. This is a musician problem, right? We all wanna be perfect. We all want every note, every chord, every rhythm, everything sound flawless from beginning to end of whatever piece we're playing, right? I got news for you. You don't have to be perfect. You need to be good. And you need to be good enough so that your audience can relate. Your audience can be engaged into whatever you're playing, whether it's a song, it's a riff, what have you. Are you communicating with your audience? Now, this does not excuse sloppy play. I'm not talking about sloppy play. I'm not getting there. This is a kind of a fine line you need to walk, but also understand that you are not a robot. You're not going to get every note perfect all the time. Well, okay, there's some players that can, but most of us, we need to just do the best we can and practice and practice and practice, and you will sound really, really good. But understand, even slight little tiny flaws I, I, most people aren't going to pick up on it for one. I'm not, again, I'm not excusing any of this. This doesn't mean like you just like be sloppy, but we are so in tune with what we're doing, right? Just please understand that you need to practice and you practice a piece, you practice a solo, you practice a song. Just work on it and do your best, the best, put your everything into it and you will have a great reaction from whatever audience you have, whether it's an audience of one or 1,000. Case in point, go all through YouTube, look at live performances, right? You, you'll find some of them, not all of them, but some of them you're going to hear mistakes. You'll hear my tear a slight flaw, a slight little thing here and there. Who cares? Who cares? You move on. Just keep going and don't dwell on that one bad note. I know we're going to still end up doing it, but try not to worry and dwell about that one bad note amongst the thousands that you were using, okay? Number three, Woo never changing our strings. I'm looking at you. Never changing our strings. Raise your hand. How many have had strings on their guitar for the last two years? They're getting all moldy and rusty and gunky and they just, they don't sound good. You have to have some sort of regular schedule of changing your strings. Now that's of course is gonna depend on how often you play. It also could matter with the style of music you're playing. Like if you have a whammy bar and you're, you're just kind of going crazy, you're wearing those strings out a little bit more. Now is there a set amount of time? I don't know, if you, if you gig a lot, you know, you're gonna probably wanna do it every couple weeks, every week, every couple weeks. Although, you know, some people like the sound of old strings. I do. I like the sound of old strings. So I'm going to tend to leave them on a little bit longer. But I'm always aware. I'm always aware like, okay, you know, if you start singing those, your strings starting to wear out a little bit, especially on acoustic guitars, those windings start, you know, chipping away. They start not looking good. You know what I'm talking about? Some of you do. It's time to change them. And lo and behold, when you change them, doesn't it sound better? <laughs> It sure does. So trying to get a regular schedule, depending on the level of playing that you have, how often you play, and the style of music you play. You're gonna to wanna to change them at some sort of regular intervals, whether it be every two weeks or every couple of months. It depends on, again, how often you play. But please, always be aware you gotta change your string sometimes, and you will sound much better. <music> 
Number four, technique doesn't matter. Oh my gosh. Um, yeah, it does. You have to learn how to do a hammer on. You have to learn how to bend a string if you're going to play a style of music that requires it. You're going to have to know how to hold a pick or a plectrum to some of you out there in the other parts of the world. You have to hold it right. So that matters. That technique matters there. How are you going to put your fingers on the strings? The position of your wrist, the position of your fingers matters. That's technique. And you need to get that right because that will set you up for success. If you're wrong, if it's off, if you're learning all of this on your own and think you got it and you don't, and you wonder why you still sound bad, that's probably one of the things that's going on is your technique's not good. Many of my students who are probably watching will know they come in and the technique's wrong or it's got something that's off that's hampering their progress as a player. And so we spend a lot of time trying to correct that. I got a video down below, guitar finger gymnastics. All right, you work on certain techniques as well as building your strength, coordination, and dexterity. Number five, and this is the biggie. I saved the best for last, not practicing enough. Hmm, yeah, I get that a lot. A lot of us are guilty. I've been guilty of this too, not practicing enough. But what is enough? Define enough. Everybody has different schedules, right? Some can dedicate hours. Some can grab 15 minutes. Some can grab five minutes. You know what? If you only had five minutes, put quality time into those five minutes. Whatever it is that you're practicing on, right? If it's a scale, just go up and down that scale. Basic. Don't get fancy. Don't get cute. You got five minutes? Go through it. You're just working on how to pick. Spend five minutes working on that. Consistency and quality is the key to your practicing. And be consistent. Practice when you can. Some days, I know a lot of us are busy. Some of you, some of you can't do it for a day or two or however long because you're doing whatever. Life gets in the way. Try to establish some sort of regular schedule. That will go a long way improving your abilities as a guitar player. Hopefully you're taking lessons from somebody if you're, especially if you're a beginner, intermediate, do what they are suggesting that you do. If you're further along, well, <laughs> you should already know this. All right, consistency and quality is the key. Put some time into it, just a few minutes a day or a few hours a day. Whatever you can afford, just put your best into it and then move on with your life. Hey, thanks a lot for watching. Please like and subscribe to the video. Check out all my freebies down there in the description below and I'll catch you on the next one, all right? Rock on.